Live from Las Vegas, Fox 5 News at 10 starts now. Only on Fox 5, a suspect accused of threatening the Republican Party of Nevada tells his story from behind bars. And fed up with violence and doing something about it. We'll take you to the rally. Then Las Vegas is number one for car thefts. Are you driving the thieves' top pick? Plus, he dressed as Captain America, but maybe he should have worn a dunce cap. Wait until you hear what this hero was arrested for. This is Fox 5 News at 10, local Las Vegas. The Las Vegas man who police say threatened the Nevada Republican Party weeks ago is behind bars tonight. Hello, I'm John Huck. And I'm Lorraine Blanco, in for Shelley Bruner. Matthew Hunter Kramer was arrested near his northwest Las Vegas home today with all kinds of weapons in his Mercedes. Tonight, the 31-year-old tells his side only on Fox 5. Matthew Kramer defending his actions at the Nevada Republican Party headquarters from behind bars. And this is a purely politically motivated charge. At no time did I ever point a gun at him, and no time was a gun even near him. On April 3rd, authorities say the 31-year-old pointed a rifle at the executive director, Zach Moyle, then threatened to finish the job if the president vetoed a war spending bill. The guy came in, he made some threats, and it's good that they picked him up because you can't run around doing that. The FBI and police arrested the 31-year-old Tuesday morning for assault with a deadly weapon and criminal syndicalism. The latter charge defined as using terrorism as a means for accomplishing political reform. And I asked them some questions about, of course, politics, why they supported the war. Um, I asked them specifically about oil because I'm in a biodiesel company. Kramer believes the charges stem from that dissent, but he insists he never made a threat that day, physical or verbal. I would say that this Republican is just as much a liar as our own president. He's angry at our president. He wanted to make his point. Yes, his point was made. Now he's in jail for it. And at the time of Kramer's arrest, officers found three swords, three knives, a flare gun, and a shotgun in his car. Kramer tells us he'd been receiving death threats and he just wanted to protect himself. Police say an angry landlord opened fire on two people early this morning. Cops say this man, David Westcott, confronted the tenant living on his property. They say Westcott was unhappy with the upkeep of the house, so he shot the tenant and a neighbor who was in the area. Both victims are expected to be okay. Westcott surrendered without incident. The man accused of killing his wife over the weekend in court this morning, Jorge Witraga, arraigned in justice court. His preliminary hearing will start June 6th. Cops say he killed his 19-year-old wife on Saturday by beating her with a hammer, then lighting her home on fire. Outrage over this weekend's deadly shooting in North Las Vegas. Church leaders and police held a rally tonight to reach out to the community. They gathered at Lake Mead Boulevard in Comstock. That's where Fox 5's Teresa Ewan is live tonight. Teresa? Yeah, John, John, this rally was part of Operation Lasting Peace. People here in this neighborhood say they are fed up with the senseless violence. The shooting must stop. The killing must stop. Cops, we pastors, and ministers stood together in North Las Vegas, a desperate call to end violence in this community. We're out against gun violence and gangs and death as a whole. It is unacceptable. It is time for us to turn this around. <laughs> On Sunday, North Las Vegas police found a woman shot to death in this alley. It, it, it really is senseless. It's tragic. Church members handed out these flyers and walked around the neighborhood talking to people like Tony Brewster. People don't want to tell them what they see because of what other people would do or what they think other people would do. So it's just the way I've been raised. But cops and church leaders say they're trying their best to break down these kinds of barriers and need people to come forward. And if it takes us standing on this corner, hooping and hollering and acting a fool, we will do that. We've did it for less than that, and I think to save a life, it's well worth it. Organizers say they'll continue to rally and hope their message doesn't fall on deaf ears. It's not going to be a quick fix. This isn't something you're going to see a difference in tomorrow or the next week. This is going to take time, and it's going to take some sincere involvement with the members of the community, and I think we're already seeing that tonight. As for Sunday's shooting, North Las Vegas police say they are working on several leads thanks to people stepping forward. Reporting live, I'm Teresa Ewan for Fox 5 News at 10 Local, Las Vegas. Teresa, thank you. And if you have any information in Sunday night shooting, call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. 
Police need your help in finding a man they say robbed a local pharmacy. Cops say on April 11th, this man approached the pharmacy window and told the technician he had a bomb outside. He said unless he got OxyContin, Dilaudid, and cash, he was going to blow the place up. The technician completed, complied, and the suspect left. His MO matches another robbery that took place on March 30th. If you know who or where this man is, call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. Thousands of pieces of stolen property will soon be on display in hopes of finding the right owners. This stuff was recovered back in February after police say the suspect stole a bait rental truck that led cops to find several storage sheds in Las Vegas filled with stolen property. These items will be on display May 4th and 5th only for those who think some of the property belongs to them. Victims should call police at 828-3646 to get on the list of people who will get a look. Well, after a steady climb, Las Vegas now tops the list for auto thefts across the nation. So what's the problem here? Fox 5's Bob Dennis reports on what law enforcement is planning to do to stop this problem. Local law enforcement is casting out the bait because over the past few years, Las Vegas has gone from third to second to now first on the list. The car window smash, the hot wiring begins, then the thief takes off, boosting your baby, your ride, your car. Here in Las Vegas, this happens more than any other city in the nation, according to a report by the National Insurance Crime Bureau. We top the list. The guy not only got my car, he got uh, 20 bucks and a lunch. Don Roach is a victim. Last week, he left his car running. Came back out about four minutes later and the uh, car was gone. The report says more than 22,000 cars were stolen in Clark County last year. This doesn't help. We stopped at a local parking lot, found a number of cars with the windows rolled down. Easy targets. The Honda Accord tops the list of cars most likely to be stolen here in Las Vegas. If you think getting these back is easy, think again. The recovery rate isn't that high. But for local law enforcement, auto theft is no laughing matter. Metro is using bait cars. Once the bad guy takes the car, the cops are on the move. The engine shuts down, the doors lock, and it's all caught on tape. Along with the sting operations and public awareness, things can only get better, right? Police say car thieves are benefiting from the large parking lots and growth in the valley. They say most of the cars are stolen by joyriders. The other cars, well, they're taken for their parts. I'm Bob Denennis for Fox 5 News at 10, local Las Vegas. Now, along with the Honda Accord, the Civic, the Toyota Camry, and several pickup models are the most stolen vehicles in Nevada. Facing a deadline, state lawmakers voted through dozens of bills today. The assembly voted to target businesses that hire illegal immigrants. Those who do could have their business license pulled. The Senate voted to make not wearing a seatbelt in a moving vehicle a primary offense, allowing officers to cite drivers for only that violation. And the Senate also approved a watered-down proposal declaring English as the state's official language. Today was the last day for Assembly bills to cross over to the Senate and for Senate bills to move to the Assembly. In recognition of National Infant Immunization Week, UMC wants to remind parents of its free shots for kids without insurance. Today, UMC's Family Resource Center hosted its Helping Kids Clinic. In addition to shots, parents were able to get necessary checkups and treatment for their kids' minor illnesses. Last year, the CDC ranked Nevada last in the nation because of its low immunization record. Area medical experts want that, st that statistic to change. National Immunization Week, and so we're up to around 600 immunizations right now, and um, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> the clinic is also scheduled for May 8th from 1 to 4 p.m. Appointments are required for all shots. Call 383-BABY for more information. A college professor is out of work tonight after talking to his students about the Virginia Tech tragedy. It's how he gave his lesson that got him fired. We're going to tell you about the controversial lecture next. And should your child be randomly tested for drugs at school? The debate is center stage at 1030. Plus, this man might owe you an apology. Find out how he makes a living saying, I'm sorry. It was all too apparent out there today in our weather that the storm is long gone. But now it's moved into the plains. And what it's doing out there is just horrendous. I'll show you that. Plus, I'll have our seven-day forecast when we come back. You're watching Fox 5 News at 10. Local Las Vegas.
You're watching Fox 5 News at 10 with Shelly Bruner, John Huff, Fox 5 Weather 24-7 with Chief Meteorologist Darren Peck, and Sports with Kevin Bollinger. This is Fox 5 News at 10, local Las Vegas. Virginia investigators are now looking into the days leading up to the Virginia Tech massacre. There is new information that gunman Cho Sung Hui paid for companionship just weeks before his killing spree. Cho reportedly hired an escort named Chastity Fry a month before the shootings. The FBI traced Fry through Cho's credit card receipts. Fry described Cho as timid but pushy. Virginia State Police also obtained Cho's cell phone and email records. The FBI, as you know, is trying to find out now exactly what was on this guy's mind, who are the types of people he associated with, so that we can try to reach some kind of understanding as to why what happened did in fact happen. Memorials and funerals for victims of the Virginia Tech massacre continue today in several states. A college professor in Massachusetts fired after reenacting the Virginia Tech shootings in his class. He said he did it to make a point about gun laws and the dis dismissal was unfair. Now he's taking his argument to the internet. Fox's John Monahan has the story. Um, obviously I'm rather unhappy that I was let go. Silenced on campus, he's now speaking out on YouTube. The Virginia Tech thing, I'd say, is, is one of the least controversial things I've talked about. 37-year-old Nicholas Winsett has turned to YouTube, uploading an 18-minute defense titled, Fired Professor Speaks Out. There's no due process at all. Uh, they did not follow any of their own rules. And in fact, they didn't talk to me. However, Emmanuel says Winsett went too far after the school encouraged professors to discuss the Virginia Tech tragedy. In class, Winsett reportedly aimed a marker at students and said bang five or six times, pretending to shoot them. Then had a student point a marker at him as if he'd been shot. Winsett says his point was to show students that maybe guns aren't all bad since the shooter was stopped. The college strongly disagreed. The firing wins it immediately and releasing this statement. Emanuel College cannot tolerate any behavior or action which makes light of or mimics the terrible tragedy at Virginia Tech. The well-being of our student body is a primary concern, and the action taken, which was to dismiss the adjunct faculty member, reflects this belief. With only two weeks left in the semester, some students we spoke with say, while they believe that Winsett did cross the line, they don't think he should have been fired, but disciplined instead. Maybe too soon, I think, is the problem. He, he did it a little too soon. He has a point, and he made his point, but maybe a bit too firmly. That was Fox's John Monahan reporting. One student tells the Boston Globe most of her classmates did not find Winsett's demonstration offensive. Now, Fox 5 Weather 24-7 with Chief Meteorologist Darren Beck, two-time Emmy Award winner. Well, we're done with our storms. We've got a very different pattern than what we've been going through over the past few days. In fact, the number out there right now, it's 74 degrees. That's warmer than the daytime high was around here yesterday. And we're not done warming up. I've got to show you over the next couple of days how much higher these numbers are going to go. We will be in the low 90s here before long. But before I get to that seven-day forecast for us, which is impressive, I want to get us updated on this storm that came through the day before yesterday, brought us some wind, some cool air. That's it. This is the last 24 hours of satellite imagery. We can see the storm spinning the atmosphere as it's over us, but it's off the map now, and it's moved out into the plains. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing here. We can see what goes on when these things hit the plains. That's the center of energy spinning up here in Colorado, but out in front of it, look at that explosion of clouds. All the cold air comes down from the center of this system. That cold air wrapping around this way is meeting up with the warmer and moist air from the Gulf. That's why we've got the nasty weather. And it's right where those two air masses meet, where you got the cold air and relatively dry air coming down from Colorado, meeting with the moist and warmer air that's coming in from the Gulf. That line right there is where you get all the nasty weather. And there has been a lot of nasty weather throughout the central part of the country over the last 12 hours. Two confirmed tornadoes so far in Texas, several fatalities already reported. The most part of this right now is down in the southwest of this system. In fact, if we come in for a close-up look at where these nasty thunderstorms are, San Antonio is under the gun at this point. In fact, 11 minutes ago, 
the National Weather Service in San Antonio issued a severe thunderstorm warning. Just to give you an idea of what the people back in this country have to deal with during this time of year, let me just read a little bit of this to you about what was just issued at 10.09. The tornado will be near Somerset by 12.15. If you're in a mobile home or a vehicle, get out and go to a sturdy shelter. If no shelter is available, lie flat in the nearest structure. This is why so many people move to Las Vegas. This stuff is nasty, and that is a tornado warning that's going to stay in effect for the next two hours from that thunderstorm that we can see rolling into San Antonio. Tomorrow, this stuff moves further east, and we'll hear more about thunderstorms along the Gulf Coast. Doesn't look like we'll get the nasty tornadoes, at least not at this point. Here's what happens for us tomorrow. Look at the sky. Not even a cloud. Maybe a cloud in the distance. We're going to be in the upper 80s by the time we're done with a number of 86 degrees by the time 5 o'clock rolls around. Here's the Fox 5 weather 24 seven-day forecast. Temperatures in the low 90s by Saturday. And then after that, the clouds will start to increase. For us, we'll be in the mid-80s by the time we get towards the early part of next week. The clouds will start to increase. But I really have nothing else to tell you about back here at home. we got a very nice setup for us. It's going to be warmer than average, because average for us this time of year is 80. So at 92, we're going to be well above that. Our weather? is really not much of a story. At this point, it's the nasty stuff that's happening through Texas. So the folks in San Antonio and down south of San Antonio and Somerset are in our thoughts at this point with some nasty weather. We'll keep you updated on that in the next half hour. I'll check back with you at 1045. Ted's going to be in tomorrow, by the way. He'll have more on our weather. Love the fact that there's no more of this wind. I know. Not, I mean, we do get a break once these things leave. And the nice thing for us is for the next seven days, there's no more coming. All right, we'll take yeah. it. Welcome summer, huh? Yes. Thank you, Darren. See Thanks, you guys. Darren. Costume party got a little out of control. And it ended up with Captain America going to jail. Find out how a burrito became incriminating evidence. That's coming up. Las Vegas tops the list for auto thefts. Discuss. Click on the rant at foxhighvegas.com. Your emails and voicemails coming up at 1042. You're watching Fox 5 News at 10. Local Las Vegas. The Simpsons are back for all ages to enjoy. Well, actually, those four feet and taller. Universal Studios is now honoring the Simpsons with their very own amusement park ride. Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie will ride along with guests in the new mega attraction. It's scheduled to open in spring of 2008 at Universal Studios Orlando and Hollywood. It's quite advanced. It, it, it utilizes both a ride vehicle and, and a, a, motion, a, a, screen, a motion picture screen that's, uh, that's literally seven stories high and completely surrounds you. So you will be immersed in the world of The Simpsons. The Simpsons is in its 18th season here on Fox, making it the current longest-running sitcom on TV. A feature-length movie is due out July 27th. Thousands in England have gone nuts, really, to break an unusual record. Led by two Monty Python performers, this London crowd broke the world record for the largest ever coconut orchestra. Terry Gilliam and Terry Jones were among the 5,000 people taking part in the event. I think it's a test... I think it's a test of God tonight, because the only way this record will not be broken is if God interferes by pouring down rain. Well, they did manage to break the old record of 1,789 coconuts set last year in New York. Random drug testing is at the center of a summit in Las Vegas. So would you want your child to take part? The controversy next. And this man gets paid to apologize, and he did to 22,000 Las Vegas tourists in February. We'll explain his odd job ahead. Then, what do you get when you cross a Captain America costume, a burrito, and a doctor? Find out 10 minutes from now. You're watching Fox 5 News at 10. Local Las Vegas. This is Fox 5 News at 10. Local Las Vegas. Should students get tested randomly for drugs? That question at the heart of a summit in town this week. The federal deputy drug czar is here in favor of random drug tests, but not everyone believes it works. Fox High's Tracy Ewan reports on the summit. The debate over drug prevention and young people rages on. 
They stared at small bags of heroin, needles. Dr. Bertha Madras spoke to the summit in Las Vegas. She talked about the harmful effects of drugs, especially on young people. She fully supports random drug tests. Nevada has no random student drug testing program. That's a dubious distinction. The second reason is that there is a significant amount of drug use in high schools in Nevada. And there are close to 14,000 young people between the ages of 12 and 17 that are in treatment for substance abuse in Clark County alone. We're concerned that the program may actually backfire and end up doing more harm than good. The federal government says there's money for schools that give random drug tests. I personally feel that it would be helpful. Clark County school officials say it would be a huge undertaking for a district this large. But it really does require a community-wide approach to enforce policies, to um, if drug testing is a direction that um, the community decides is helpful and the school district decides is helpful the school board then you know that's something that the the community would have to support parents would have to support that but not everyone supports random drug tests absolutely not why that's an invasion of privacy why should every kid at the school you know be required to take a drug test i'm actually kind of torn on that subject because it would be a good thing to know who's doing what in case somebody got hurt but at the same time i wouldn't want somebody in my personal life and some parents are split on this controversial issue i'm for it but again if they did something about it and had programs, you know, and the parents were actively involved, which they wouldn't be in this position if they were, kind of, um, I think that it would be worth it. I really think that uh, the, the parents will take offense to it. Tracy Yoon reporting for us. The Department of Education recently announced that $1.6 million in grant money is available for schools that want to begin random drug testing programs. The verbal battle over funding for the Iraq war heats up. Vice President Dick Cheney is lashing out against Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. On Capitol Hill today, the Vice President responded to Senator Reid's recent comments about the war in Iraq, calling them, quote, defeatism and accusing the senator of playing politics. Senator Reid's taken many positions on Iraq. He has threatened that if the president vetoes the current pending supplemental legislation that he will send up Senator Russ Feingold's bill to defund Iraq operations altogether. Yet only last November, Senator Reid said there would be no cutoff of funds for the military in Iraq. So in less than six months' time, Senator Reid has gone from pledging full funding for the military, then full funding but with conditions, and then a cutoff of funding. This is not a time for name-calling. I think it's a time for cinching up our belts and doing what's right for the troops. That's what our supplemental appropriation bill is all about. Hours earlier, President Bush again reiterated his plan to veto any war spending bill that would include a timetable for withdrawal. Jessica Lynch and the family of Pat Tillman say they don't agree with the military's public relations approach. Today they told Congress the Pentagon misled the country and lied about their war stories. An Army Ranger who was with Pat Tillman when he died from friendly fire says a higher-up told him to lie to Tillman's family. Jessica Lynch says the military made up stories about her, too. At my parents' home in Work County, West Virginia, it was understaged by media, all repeating the story of the little girl Rambo from the hills of West Virginia who went down fighting. It was not true. A congressional committee chair also says the military postponed Lynch's rescue by a day in order to videotape it. An Indiana prison riot is under control tonight, but two staff members are hurt. Prisoners set two fires in a courtyard in this facility. Investigators say the violence may have resulted from tension between Indiana inmates and other prisoners brought in from Arizona because of overcrowding. No inmates escaped. Virgin Atlantic Airways makes an environmentally friendly move. Boeing announced today that the airline ordered 15 of its 787 Dreamliners. Virgin Atlantic says the 787 burns 27% less fuel than the planes they'll replace. This is the largest European order yet for the Dreamliners, which will begin service next year. Our planet needs the biggest step change of them all. We need the technology to be developed, which will reduce carbon emissions put out by all airlines who contribute nearly 2% of all global carbon emissions. 
Virgin and Boeing are also teaming up to develop a new biofuel for jets that could be tested as early as next year. All right, you don't see saying sorry in many job requirements, but there's one position out there where apologies are an important part of the job. And sooner or later, you might hear from Mr. Apology. Fox's Scott Sayers explains. I wholeheartedly apologize. This is Fred Taylor's job. And on behalf of Southwest Airlines, I wholeheartedly apologize. Officially, Taylor is called a proactive customer service communications manager. And on behalf of Southwest Airlines, I wholeheartedly apologize. For the Unofficially, he's known as Mr. Apology because he spends most of his time saying he's sorry. Yes, I do. Um, but that's all for good reason, of course. Um, and I want to make sure that our customers know that we are sorry for the inconvenience or the disruption that they incurred. That might not sound too hard, except... Naturally, everyone's mood was dampened by the untimely occurrence of the mechanical problem. Taylor tries to apologize before anyone complains. When they arrive home, they open their mailbox. My letter is sitting there waiting for them to open and read. Uh, thunderstorms around the St. Louis area. Which is why Taylor spends a lot of time here in Southwest's Flight Dispatch Center, looking for weather delays, maintenance problems, anything that provides... The opportunity to say, I'm sorry. We certainly realize the disruptions of your March 20 flight. We certainly realize the disruptions of your March 20 flight. Over the last five years, Taylor and Southwest have averaged about 20,000 letters per year. Southwest South! This year has been a bit busier. In February, most of these passengers in Las Vegas were owed a letter after a major snafu stranded them in line for hours. That was around 22,000 letters. No need to apologize. Taylor does feel the need, not just because it's good business to say, I'm sorry, but because it's his job. That was Scott Sayers reporting. Southwest Apology Program has been in place for five years. Do you know proper email etiquette? Well, there is a new book putting your typing to the test. The book is called Send and gives the do's and don'ts of emails and text messaging. For example, don't forward emails or text messages without permission and always fill out the subject lines in your emails. Send comes out in stores uh, right about now. There's a website you can check out with more email etiquette. A link on our website can be found at fox5vegas.com. A Florida doctor obviously isn't a brain surgeon. He put on a superhero costume and got himself into some super trouble. Here's Kevin Oliver with the story. This certainly isn't the Captain America from the comic books. This one, wandering around the booking office of the Melbourne Police Department, is accused of sinister deeds more fitting of a villain than a superhero. It was quite something to see a superhero, you know, at a downtime in, in his life. On Saturday night, when a costume party full of medical professionals stopped at ONTAP Cafe, police say Adam Chek had a burrito stuffed below the waistband of his costume and was asking women if they wanted to touch it. When one refused, he took out the burrito and groped her. The woman called police, and when they arrived, the officers wrote in their report, there were so many cartoon characters in the bar at the time, all Captain Americas were asked to go outside for a possible identification. The woman pointed out Adam Chick. The burrito was found in his boot, and he was arrested. One of the police officers even had his shield, and uh, we were kind of waiting for him to show some of his superpowers, but he was quite subdued. Then while in a holding cell, police say he asked to use the bathroom and tried to flush a joint, also hidden in his blue tights, down the toilet. The officer observed him throw something into the toilet and he tried to flush it. The officer was able to reach his hand inside the toilet and grab part of what he tried to flush. Now the doctor is no longer trying to be a superhero. He's relying on a lawyer to get him out of this mess. Well, your next pack of trading cards could have a celebrity surprise inside. Find out who's being added to the sports stacks. That's a little later. And we've learned today that Las Vegas now is at the top of the list uh, for auto thefts around the country. Lynn writes, uh, no wonder this is the capital of uh, auto thefts. The thief that stole my son's car was positively identified, yet the DA refused to press charges. We're going to have her rant and many more coming up right after the break. As warm as it was today, especially when compared to the last few days that we've had, we're really just halfway through this trend of temperatures that are going to continue to go up. I've got to show you where we'll be by the time the weekend gets here in the forecast when we come back.
Darren Peck holds the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. At 1043 now, it's the rant, and after flirting with the number one spot for years, Las Vegas is now at the top of the list for car thefts. This is after Metro rolled out its bait car program. The good news is that thefts here have dropped by 22%, but apparently those numbers uh, couldn't help keep our city off the top of the list. Here we go. Lynn writes, my son's Mustang was stolen in broad daylight. The thief was positively identified, yet the DA's office refused to press charges, stating that there was not enough evidence, and they wonder why Las Vegas is the car theft capital of the country. Why not? You won't go to jail for it. Uh, Ty? Kind of blames Metro on this, so Las Vegas is rated number one in the nation for auto theft. Metro got their tax increase for extra personnel and their pay raise. So how about they return the favor and help out with our insurance rates a little? All right, you see this video uh, last night we ran on the news? A Colorado State football player accidentally blitzed a four-year-old boy. 30 stitches later, that boy is going to be okay. Some parents are wondering, though, what the child's doing in the end zone in the first place. Oh, my goodness. That lady needs to keep an eye on her kids. We do have eyes on the back of our heads. I'm a parent, I got three kids. I got eyes everywhere. Keep an eye on your kids, people. I'd like to see the names of our city council members who voted to spend $200,000 of our taxpayers' money to fight this right term plan, when it would only cost us 48,000 to keep our aid centers open. And as Lorraine just told me, just go to the Las Vegas City Council website and click on each and every member. That's who voted to continue that fight. All right, well, as you saw earlier tonight, the war of words over the war has widened to include Vice President Dick Cheney now. Uh, today, Cheney called Senator Harry Reid defeatist for insisting the war is lost. Reid fired back that he wasn't going to respond to the president's attack dog. Uh, got a lot of emails on Senator Reid's comments earlier that the war was lost. A lot of people saying he's hurting the troops, others saying he's just saying the truth. So from Russ, Reed's comment on the war being lost is a fact. Get over it. I don't believe it affects the majority of our troops at all. They know they still have to be committed to the fight. The only reason they don't say anything against the war is because of repercussions from higher-ups. Same thing as when I was in Vietnam. But a different perspective from a different Vietnam vet. I was in a political war that cost several of my friends their lives. Keep politics out of this conflict. I'd like to know if Reed is taking his advice from the military commanders in Iraq or some retired individual who still wants to be in the game. Nick writes, this is ridiculous. If anyone cares about the troops, it is Harry Reid. He's trying to get them out of Iraq from a failed war and foreign policy disaster. The Bush administration doesn't care about the troops. It lied about the reason to go to war with Iraq. And from Rachel, I'm appalled at what Senator Reid said regarding our war in Iraq. My brother, a Lance Corporal, was killed in Iraq, and I take serious offense at Reed's remarks. My brother did not die in vain, nor did any other soldier that lost their life in Iraqi freedom. All right, it's the rant at fox5vegas.com. Send us your emails, or you can call us at 436-8285. Now, Fox 5 Weather 24-7 with Chief Meteorologist Darren Beck, two-time Emmy Award winner. To give you an idea how the weather pattern has changed for us over the last 24 hours, around 4 in the afternoon, I was looking on from the camera that we've got on top of the stratosphere to find some clouds out there. I found some, but they didn't last long. As the time lapse shows us, they all pretty much just kind of dissolve. They got squashed out, dried out, and it's history. By the time the sun went down, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, and there won't be a whole lot of that either over the next couple of days. What we will have is much warmer temperatures, calm conditions, sunny skies, Take right now, for example, look at the number. 74 degrees is warmer than the daytime high was yesterday. Tomorrow, we're going to go up about 7 or 8 degrees from where we were today. So it's a warming trend that is really, we're stuck in the middle of it at this point. We're going to top out by the time the weekend gets here, and that's going to put us in the low 90s. There goes the storm. The clouds spin way off into the Colorado Rockies and out into the plains, leaving us in the clear at the moment. But that storm... That very nasty storm still spinning through parts of the central and southern plains right now with the tornado warning that had been issued just south of San Antonio. That is going to be the concern over the next several hours of tonight as those storms continue to move through south-central Texas. Uh, one other aspect from this storm was the snow. And this is the last 24 hours of radar that we're picking up over the Colorado Rockies from it. And we can see all the blue 
is light snow that fell in the San Juan Mountains, which is excellent news for us because that stuff eventually melts off and gets into the Colorado River, which is what's going to help with the drought. It's not a lot of help, but anything is good considering how far below we are, about 60% of where we would need to be for this time of year. Here's what we do over the next 24 hours. Not much in the way of cloud cover. Temperatures will be in the mid and upper 80s tomorrow. Going to get up to 88 for a daytime high. We'll be back down to 86 degrees by the time 5 o'clock rolls around. Here's the Fox 5 weather 24-7 day forecast. 92 degrees on Saturday. That's where we're going to peak. And then after that, there's not really a major cool down. We're only going to go down into the mid and upper 80s by the time we get to a week from now. Nothing major going on. Just warmer than average temperatures and no storms heading our way. Ted's going to have an eye on this for you tomorrow morning. He'll also have the latest on whatever nasty weather might be happening across the central and southeastern part of the country. And Digital Channel 125 has got us covered here at home around the clock. You can check in there whenever you want to. Pretty much perfect for us, though. Isn't it nice? Thank you, Darren. Sure. sure. Is. Thanks, Jared. Head in sports, the Giants and Dodgers heat up their rivalry. And the Lakers fight for their lives in the NBA playoffs. But are they down for the count? Kevin has all the highlights coming up next. Rough road trip for the 51s in Sacramento this week for the second straight game. An error cost Las Vegas the game. They lose 6-5 to five and get swept. Now the 51s have tomorrow off. They open an eight-game homestand, though, Thursday at Cashman. Dodgers and Giants in San Francisco jumping on L.A. starter Derek Lowe early. Randy win. Doubling home Ryan Klesko in the second. San Francisco had the early 2-0 lead. Then Dave Roberts shoots and spins and sends one out to right center field. Giants win this one 5-3. That's San Francisco's sixth win in a row and their eighth in the last nine. Same two teams tomorrow night at Chavez Ravine. Angels blew a big lead against Detroit this afternoon, but they were down one in the ninth. The wild pitch, Vlad Guerrero is going to try to scamper home, and he is safe at the plate. We were headed to extra innings. In the 10th, there were runners on second and third, one out. Eric Ibar up at the plate, the little chopper to second base. Runners trying to score, and he's safe as well. That's Reggie Willits with the game winner. Angels take it, 9-8. Kobe and the Lakers looking to get a split in Phoenix tonight, and this was a good indication of how the night would go as Bryant gets blocked by Amari Stoudemire. The Suns were clicking on all cylinders. Watch Kobe get the ball knocked away, and they're going to work it ahead to former UNLV star Sean Marion. He's going to throw it down with the right hand. The play of the night, though, Steve Nash at half court. The alley whoop, over to Marion. That is beautiful right there. We aren't even going to bother to show you what happened in the second half. L.A. gets smoked 126 to 98. They fall behind 2-0 in the series. In Chicago, Bulls in heat, and this was close until the third quarter. Chicago went on a 9-0 run capped by the Ben Gordon three. Gordon had 27. The Wild Dang had 26 for the Bulls, including 14 in the fourth quarter. Chicago wins 107-89. to They go up 2-0 on the Heat. Raptors and Nets before the game. Toronto head coach Sam Mitchell presented with the Coach of the Year award. And then he watched the star player Chris Bosh with the nice move to the hole, and he's putting it down with the left hand and the foul as well. And Bosch wasn't done. Watch the little circus shot as he just heaves it up, gets the hoop and the harm. Toronto wins at 89-83. This series is even at a game apiece. One other NBA note, major shakeup in Seattle continues. Today they fire head coach Bob Hill and general manager Rick Sund following one of the worst seasons in franchise history. Of course, this comes on the heels of a failed uh, arena negotiations going on in Seattle and the speculation that the team will be moving to Oklahoma City. And all right, Las Vegas, our Valley hockey fans, tomorrow night, Wranglers game three at the Orleans Arena against the Idaho Steelheads. And they're looking to fill it up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night games at the Orleans. Sounds all right. good. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thank Kevin, you, Kevin. Thank you. We have a look at Anna Nicole's final movie role. That's coming up next. For late breaking news anytime, log on to Fox5Vegas.com. We are getting a first look at the last movie of Anna Nicole Smith. That's right. This clip is from the film Illegal Aliens. It's the last project she worked on before her untimely death in February. The film is about three aliens who morph into sexy women and protect the Earth from evil. The movie is expected to be released on DVD May 1st. And trading cards will now have some C-list actors mixed with sports stars. Spectrum's Baseball 2007 cards are... Mixed with actors like Todd Bridges from Different Strokes and David Faustino from Married with Children. 
The packs are on sale now for about seven dollars a pack. Why would you want one of those? Yeah, what's the point? What's the point? Is that like the booby prize? Uh, All right. Not good. Good night, everybody. Thank you.